I thought he had a lead, and I think he thought he had a lead. And I think that in the last couple of rounds, when when Garcia picked up, you know, put his put his foot on the pedal, at that point, when Garcia put his foot on the pedal, Thurman, at that point, there was no re reason probably felt to take a lot of chances. There were a lot of close rounds, so you know, it was, it was a tactical fight. But all of that happened once Danny made the adjustments, say about maybe the fourth or fifth round, he started with his right hand arm to guard against Thurman's left arm. I looked at the punch. I don't have him in front of me. I wish I did, but I, I, when I was running like back to get here, I, I passed the coffee box guys and I saw the punch. That's which I was really curious about in the fight because, and, and they were and and it was pretty much Danny's output was pretty consistent for like the first first eight rounds, nine nine rounds really, and then he turned it up in the last three. Like, like you saw, noticeable. Like the, the the punch stats were very similar apparently for most of the first nine, and then he turned it up in the last three, and the la and by that time I, I think probably I'm guessing the other guy thought I got a big lead I don't need to mix it up. I mean, it's a little, it's a little, a little early for that. The plan for here is to come back April twenty second and do uh, Porter and, uh, and Porter and, and continue, continue, you know, good fights in the welterweight division and narrow down. Um, we got uh, Eric Lubin. We'll bring him up right now. We'll enter some fun. That was a pretty sensational knockout. Congratulations. How's everybody doing? I'm excited to be here, you know, um, walking away with the knockout in the mandatory spot. You know, I worked real hard in camp, had great sparring partners. Um, everything just went well, you know, for me, this whole camp and tonight. You know, I plan on moving on in the future, um, getting bigger fights, you know, being in a fight like the main event, you know. I want to unify titles, I want to move up, you know, and keep unifying titles and, you know, become pound for pound champion one day. You know, I'm not ducking anyone. I'll fight anybody in 154 pound division. And, you know, I'm excited. Uh, have a great night, you know. It's a great night for me. I'm 18 and no, 13 knockouts now. You know, and um, I want to thank Showtime, CBS, PBC, my advisor, uh, Al Heyman, um, Gary Jonas, my trainers, my sparring partners, you know, everything was um tonight played out well. Thank you. Any questions for Eric? You set him up for that. Is that the hammer? That was, yeah, that was sledge. Yeah, that was sledge. Okay, that was that was sledge hammer. This was Jack. Jack hammer. <laughs> Bernie. Yeah, you remember uh before you turned pro at eighteen. Um, the then president of uh, USA Boxing kind of said, you know, that you should have tried to stay around and uh, compete on the try to, you know, at the Olympics. Um, that decision to turn pro when you did starting to look pretty good now, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I have no regrets. It's my gold medal right here. It's my uh, Olympic gold medal. You know, um, 
me and my team made a decision not to go, um, not to stay in the amateurs. You know, they were taking off the headgears and stuff like that. And, um, you know, we feel like we made the right decision because we came up and we was playing good opposition, you know, just so young at 18 years old. And, you know, I feel like the fights I had in the past, you know, um, prepared me for tonight and moving, moving on further. First of all, 21 years old, you're an impressive young man. Um, so congratulations to you and your team for your sharp young man. Um, with regard to dealing with taller fighters, uh, Coda was, was a taller guy, and that most of the guys that you're gonna deal with at 154 are gonna be taller guys. Uh, how do you make the adjustments with the taller guys like the Charlos? Um, just setting them up. You know, I kept using my jab, I kept stabbing them to the body. You know, my jab was something I lacked in the past in my previous fights. You know, not using the jab as much. And, you know, tonight I wanted to um, keep using it and set him up for the big shots. And, you know, he didn't know that that, that big shot was coming. And I plan on doing that to, you know, um, all the other tall guys and, you know, to set them up for big shots. Thanks. Erickson, what do you think maybe you showed people tonight who had never seen you fight on CBS? Um, I showed them, you know, I could box, I could go to rounds too, but, you know, it ended early, but, you know, I showed them I could, I could box, you know, and use my jab, because, you know, I heard commentators before telling me, you know, I'm not using my jab enough, and, um, you know, I'm just telegraphing my shots and winding up for the big shots, but, you know, um, I used my jab pretty well tonight, so, like, that's what I showed everybody. People love knockouts, what do you think they thought of the, fin the finish of the fight? Well, I mean... Yeah, I think they um, enjoyed that knockout. You know, I got a lot of um, a lot of love for that knockout tonight. Erickson, you said you'd take on anyone at 154. Anyone. Are there some names that maybe you want more than others? Who do you want? Anyone. Anyone. He lacks confidence. <laughs> so, who do you feel is your biggest competition at 154? I couldn't answer that. I couldn't answer that. Is it Demetrius Andrade? No. <laughs> I think we'd all love to see that in a couple of years. Let's do like it. Not right now. My pen ready. Okay. My pen ready. Erickson, Xavier Porter, BrooklynFighters.com. We're here in front. Right. Um, so you are the number one mandatory for outside of uh, the WBC for um, Charlo and Halley, correct? Yeah. Hey, how soon? If you know, how soon will that fight take place? If you know. I mean, they just postponed the fight, so whenever they, you know, um, get to fight each other, you know, I'll have to fight the winner whenever. You know, talk to Al, talk to anybody, you know, to get that fight, you know. So it doesn't matter who, who it is, you just want your no, scrap. Yeah, I definitely do. Okay. Do you expect that to be your next fight? I do expect that to be my next fight. If not, you know, I'll fight anybody with the title. I feel like this is um, my time for a title shot. Keith Box, um, real, real nice tonight. You know, um, he was a quicker man. He was in and out. I feel like you know he started to um, fade in the later rounds, but you know he still had that, still had that um, one in his tank to keep moving. You know, he pulled it off. That's it. Thank you, Eric. All right, thank you very much.
I'm handled by the um, in late April. Possibly. She could also kind of possibly fight on the card that's going to open the National Health Center for Bob. I think she was talking about, um, I think that she had a mixed No, I think she, she wants to be the first woman to win titles in five weight classes. So what she's aiming at now is a, is a world title fight at 118 pounds. Do you think she might try to? I hope not. I hope she won't have to. I hope she's making enough money in boxing she doesn't have to try Quick question. How come, um, how come Dawson and Pompar were on the team? Gotta ask Showtime. It's a good fight. It's good names. Well, first of all, you, you really, like, just on a two hour scheduled show, you don't have time for three fights. And, um, uh, start with that. Ladies and gentlemen, Danny Garcia. You know, thank the media, you know, for coming out after enjoying a great fight. You know, it was a tough fight. Um, you know, I came short in the uh, decision. I thought I, uh, I thought I pressed the fight. I thought I did enough to get the decision, but you know, only one judge had it my way, and it is what it is. You know, true champions bounce back. I take my defeats. Like, I take my wins, you know, it's a learning experience, and it is what it is, what can I say? I could have threw a little more combinations, you know, um, instead of throwing one punch at a time, but, you know, he was moving a lot, I didn't want to get caught reaching. Um, I thought it was better to, you know, put a lot of foot pressure on him and, Try to close the distance and land some shots, which I did. But you know, he he had a good game plan. It is what it is. Danny, did he do anything better than you expected him to, or was he about what you expected? You know, I expected that. I expected him to come in here and box. Um, you know, try to load up on some big punches. You know, I took his best shot. He never hurt me, and maybe that's why he's moved even more after that. But. Um, you know, it is what it is. Um, he won the fight, split decision, and the only thing I could do is bounce back. Danny, were you surprised he came out fast in the first round? Were you expecting that? I kind of thought he would, um, yeah, I, I expected it. I expected it. I thought he would j try to jump on me. Um, I'm a slow starter, so he probably tried to jump on me early, but um, he landed a couple clean shots. You know, I took the shots good, and I, and I came back. Danny, it looked like he faded, either faded towards the last two rounds or gave him up. I don't know, you know, um, I know I was going to fight to the end. I always fight to the end like a true champion. Um, you know, I don't know, maybe they get tired. You know, I was getting stronger as the fight went on. I felt like I started to control the pace of the fight, even though he, um, you know, he was landing some good counter punches and moving. But, um, 
you know, I, I thought I did a, um, a good job. And what about his punching power? Uh, how would you measure it out to, like, some of the other guys that you've been in the ring with? Like, and... yeah, he's strong, but it, it wasn't it wasn't enough to, like, to, to hurt me or something. He made some good punches. Um, I would say he's more fast than, than the strong. <laughs> Do you still think the same about his body? Do you think his body is weak in the body, or... And he took a, he, I hit him with a good body shot. I forgot what round it was. It was like the ninth or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He walked back to the corner. He kind of leaned in. So I hit him with a good body shot. You know, he he, he got the break. He weathered the storm. So I give him credit. What was going on in the corner? Last couple rounds, did you feel like you had a lead or did you I thought it was close. I thought it was close. Um, I thought it was close. And um, that's why the last four rounds, I just put the pressure on him and tried to and try to throw punches and cut the ring off. Um, and that's why I thought I, um, I won the fight because I closed the fight off like a, like a true champion. And two questions. One, how hurt were you in the first round? And the second, um, you, you made an adjustment in which you were keeping your right hand up to, go, you know, to protect yourself against Thurman's left hook. I was saying about in the fourth or fifth round. Was that something you saw, or was that something that your dad told you? Um, he with a good shot in the first round. Everybody really didn't, um, it didn't hurt me. It woke me up, you know, because I'm a slow starter sometimes. So, but he made a good shot, you know. Um, it, it didn't hurt me like I was dazed and I. But, um, I just had, my dad told me to tighten up my defense. Tighten up my defense, um, you know, because he's jumping in with the hook. So, I tried to stay in the pocket and wait till you came in to, uh, to land some shots. How, how did your dad take the decision? He's upset. My dad's always upset. <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, he, he thought I won the fight, you know. He thought I won the fight. He was a little upset. But like, I told him, you know, we gotta, when you're a true champion, you know, you got to take the defeats like your wins. And, I, you know, I... I would love to, you know, I would love to. I would love to do the rematch. Um, but um, we'll have to see what happens. No, you can't win a fight running, bro. He hit Danny with a good shot on the first. It was a good shot, Danny. He sucked it up, came back on the second, was there in front of him. Then he ran all the way from the six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 11, 12. How you win the fight? You gotta be kidding me, brother. This this is a this is a sport where it's, 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 you gotta do you gotta do contact with the fighter, with the person in front of you. You just can't run. It's like when Lara and, uh, and Canelo they fought. The same thing, and they give it to Canelo for being the aggressive. But he, you know what I'm saying? I'm not being a show loser or like that. But if he would have beat, he would have won. Then I say I take my hat off and say good good job, champion. But you can't beat it. You can't win. You can't be a world champion like that, bro. You just cannot. And I'm not being a soldier. I'm just di disgusted right now with boxing right now. I want really Danny to retire today. I really want him to retire. Rematch, no, because we don't believe it. The only one we ever gave a rematch to was uh, Morales. I don't think we should get a rematch. We should start all over if Danny wants to do it. But I, the advice I give him as a dad, we don't step in stone to nobody. We had no stepping stone. Let the new unified welterweight champion, Keith Thurman, say a few words. Thank you very much. What's up, guys? That was a great fight, right? That was a great fight. Huh? That was a good fight. Defense, defense. Norman, Norman. It's boxing, baby. Look, man, I told him ahead of time. You fought Khan. He could box. You fought Matisse. He could punch. But you never fought somebody that can box and punch at the same time, you know? Now, people forget that boxing is a sport. 
and sports are scored on a point system, right? Now, fight fans love to see a tremendous fight. And sometimes when you come to a boxing match, you do get that. You get what you want. You get what you desire. But sometimes you see boxing. Boxing is an art. I finessed my way to victory. I told you that my defense and my accurate punching is what made me victorious. It was a small margin, but it still made me victorious over Sean Porter, okay? Danny, we believe that we took a big lead. We hit him with big punches early on, and he had this awkward movement about him. He had this awkward way he wanted to counter me. I was aware of his counters. I told you guys that he throws wide. I wanted to throw wide too. I wanted to show him like, you know, you swing, I swing. Batter up, right? I've been giving y'all baseball references this whole week. Batters up. He swung, but he ain't hit no home run. I swung, I didn't hit no home run. But overall, I landed more punches. There were a few rounds where his aggressiveness and the lack of uh, my output may have won him some rounds. But in the same essence, I could use that same boxing style, up my work rate, and there are rounds where for every one punch, I was landing two to three punches in return. And I knew I was winning those rounds. You know, um, he didn't like, my movement and I understood that and I told you guys once again that I'm gonna treat him like a computer you know we're gonna copy and paste whatever's working whatever's working we're gonna copy and paste you know he didn't like the different angles he didn't like the elevation of the head he constantly was trying to go to the body constantly going to the body because he couldn't hit me to the head then we swung at the head I ducked I made him miss you know um, I used my jab a lot his eyes were very good. I was actually impressed with the way he was able to read. You know, I, I mixed up changing the jab into a hook and it was effective sometimes, but due to his lean back and his understanding of distance, um, sometimes I was missing that well, you know? I mean, I told you guys, I do this shit for fun, baby. This is my day job. This is my job. This is my dreams. This is what I'm here for. I'm here for the challenge. And Danny Garcia did challenge me today, but I passed. I passed. He did not pass the Keith Thurman test. Sean Porter did not pass the Keith Thurman test. We are 28 years old, 20 wins, 22 by way of knockout. I mean, I love the world of boxing. This is what I've loved ever since I was a kid. And it was an honor and a blessing to be a part of boxing history today and to have a tremendous world champion like Danny Garcia as my opponent. You guys, you know, y'all should start to see, man. I'm humble, man. I truly love the sport. I love everything that comes with it. Hey, Keith, uh, how do you rate Danny's power? He's strong, you know? I mean, uh, he hit me in the arm in one of those left hooks that he missed, and, I mean, my arm hurts right now. I mean, it felt like a brick was coming at me, you know? Um, so he, he's strong, and, I, and I, I constantly said that, you know, what could be his weakness is his flat-footedness. What could be his strength is his flat-footedness. His flat-footedness allowed me to dance around him, allowed me to move. But it's the fact that he's flat-footed, when he wants to commit to punching, when he wants to commit to swinging, he has weight behind it. And I felt the weight of Danny's punches today. I, I kept my defense, I got out the way, uh, with the majority of practically all of them, you know, and, um, and it wasn't that effective. But his power was there. He was eager. He would start throwing, you know, two hooks together, three hooks together, awkward uppercuts and hooks, but they were swinging and, and not being that effective. Can he be changed? Okay, hold on, hold on. Can he be changed? Uh, or is that how, how he fights? You know, the, Adrian Broner calls it the no look left hook. Can a trainer come and, and change that about him? Because obviously he was exposed tonight, I guess. I think he has changed a little bit, you know. Um, when I was backing him down, he was hopping. He was doing a little bit of the side to side, side to side, pull back, smother me, hold me. He had, he had technique, man. He had technique. But I had superior technique. And I was able to read his technique, you know. But ultimately... It comes down to 
who lands the most punches, who's the most accurate, you know. I knew there were times where my hands were up, right? He's throwing a one-two. And I have to think to myself, that didn't hit me. But it looks good for the judges. It didn't hit me. But it looks good to the crowd, you know? Am I winning this round? Because he did that? Am I winning this round? Mm. I don't know. You got to take that in consideration, Keith. You haven't gotten a knockdown yet. You haven't got a real ultimate spread that puts all eyes on you and on your damage, you know. Um, I was check hooking them, you know. I was landing straight right hands to the body. I was landing short uppercuts here and there. Um, I was landing more of the combinations when combinations were thrown. Um, I mean, it was, it, was, it was a nice night of boxing, in my opinion. Thank you. Straight back. Congratulations on the victory. Thank you. Uh, my question is, when you uh, apparently took your foot off the gas a little bit the last couple of rounds and saw some of the comments that Dan made <coughs> in the ring that he was okay with that also, the way that boxing matches are scored oftentimes, that, that, that has many times in the past cost fighters victories where they may be ahead and they, they ease up and it costs them in the end. Uh, did that at all enter the thought process of yourself or you, Dan? Uh, and, and why? Because you know how risky it can be to do that in these kinds of fights. You guys got away with it, I guess, tonight. But, uh, you know, it seemed like it might have been able to possibly cost you at some point. I mean, it cost a few rounds, probably. I mean, it's probably why the one judge made it a split, right? I mean, we didn't win unanimous. This is probably the first 12-round fight of my professional career where it wasn't a unanimous decision, right? So, you know, you're correct in that sense. But as I was doing it, as I was pulling back, how many times did I make a miss? You know, I was saying, if you're going to do this, he cannot touch you. The more he does not touch you, the less credit he gets, no matter if he's more aggressive, no matter, because you have to assess scoring blows. I got here late. I didn't hear everything that Team Garcia had to say, but he mentioned the Laura fight, right? And Laura was very defensive. And Canelo was very active, and it's not like Canelo's activity was highly superior. But like I said, man, when a fighter has his hands up and he's blocking, but the other fighter does throw a one-two, and it kind of pushes him to the left, throws him off to the right or whatever, it does have an effect on the judges, you know. So if he did that, you know, I try to at least think to myself, you got to get a little bit back in this round. You got to get a little bit back in this round. You got to push at a few moments of this round. There are times where my movement... Danny didn't like the movement, right? He stepped back into the middle of the ring. What did Keith one time Thurman do? Step right up. Step right up. I wasn't sitting in the back like, nah, man, nah, man, come. Come chase me, chase me, nah. As soon as he took off the gas, I got right in his face because I just wanted to be awkward for him, you know? I mean, we did what we had to do to win tonight, and we try to do that each and every time we fight. All right, well, now, that you, have these, now that you have this victory, who, uh, it's a great, it's a great weight class. You have two titles now in this weight class. Uh, fights will come to you, but in your mind, I know you want to fight the best guys, but who do you want to fight in your in your next fight? <sighs> to be honest, you know, um, I'm not sure. You know, um, his father said no rematch. Danny might want a rematch. Fans might want a rematch. Who knows, man? Um, there's a there's a lot out there. Um, but real talk, real negotiations, I have no clue, man. Um, I want to keep giving you guys some great fights, right? I mean, I produced two back-to-back. -back. Um, those who really are in the sport of boxing knows that there is an opportunity for me to take um, a mandatory that we, we did not have to really address at the end of the day, you know? And another reason why was because that's not the fight that I wanted. Um, I can't say what I want right now because I got what I want. So right now I'm going to sit back, reflect, and I will be stepping back in the ring sometime later on this year. I'm not going to do the whole one fight performance. We didn't have, um, it's, it's, it's unnecessary, but um, we're going to have to see what manifests. There, there might be some form of a rematch fight. There might be some form of a stay busy fight and um, then there might be a great fight in the near future because the walkway division is a great division and you know the motto stays the same I got to oh I'm not afraid to let it go if you can beat me beat me
Okay, speaking of great fights, uh, Kel Brook is going to fight Errol Spence. Would that be a fight that interests you, the winner of that? And then the next fight, you they would fight you. You know, of course, that's a great fight. And fighting the winner is important. But when will it manifest? I don't know. How eager of the manifestation? I don't know. Do I want to see three world titles strapped around me? Of course I do. Do I want to see three world titles strapped around any one of the Walter Waits in the Walter Waite division? Yes, I do. Why? Because Keith One Time Thurman is not just a boxer, but a boxing fan. And the world of boxing deserves history. We live a life to make history. Countries, nations. I mean, Trump is president, people. Come on. History, okay? History. Barack got in office, two terms, history, all right? So it's been a long time since we've seen an undisputed champion in the Walter Waite division, right? It will manifest. I just can't promise you guys a win right here, right now on this podium today. Keith, uh, congratulations. We appreciate the historic perspective also. Looking back at the uh, round one and two. They, they were so different. You know, round one, you seemed to jump on him and you were offensive and seemed to hurt him quite quite bad at what it looked like. And round two, you took a totally different approach by moving back. Can you just talk, talk us through what happened and what was going through your mind between those two, the, that, that switch? Testing the waters, man, you know? I mean, it's my job. It's my job, you know? I mean, and when I show up, I'm the boss. Nobody gets to tell the boss, you know, exactly what to do. Luckily, I got a great advisor, Dan Birmingham, right? But it's my fight, baby. It's my fight, you know? And eventually, I wanted, I wanted to show him, you know? I wanted to do what Ben Getty always told me to do when we fought in the amateurs. You know, reflecting on this fight, I told myself, this is a national tournament. You and Danny used to compete all the time in, you know, one weight class away from each other. You never got to be in the ring with him. He was a national champion. You were a national champion. He was a world champion. You're a world champion. I mean, this is, you know, this is boxing. And this is world-class American fighters going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And, you know, not only did I want to show him the power right away. That's what Ben used to say. Go out there and show him your power, boy. That way they know what they're dealing with. That way we get to test their heart. We get to see how eager they are to step up to the challenge of facing one time Keith Thurman. You know, outside of that, you know, Dan Birmingham, St. Pete Boxing, legendary Winky Wright. Winky was at the fight. He comes out, he shows me a lot of love. Every single time, even if he's not at the fight, he'll send me a message. And it's one simple line he says all the time. Do you and have fun. We had fun tonight. That's what it was all about. Keith, now we noticed, you know, it was a chess match much of the fight, but it seemed like in the last minute, sometimes Danny would try to, you know, do like a Sugar Ray Leonard and steal the round with a little flurry, to which you responded coming right back. Is that something you did specifically for this fight, or is that just your mentality as a fighter? You know, if a guy hits you two, three times, you got to get him back or more. You know, I mean, it's competitive. I don't know exactly what the judges are thinking. And of course, I don't want him to be able to steal the round. If he's trying to steal around, I want to steal around. You know what I mean? I mean, it's a fight, you know? Um, and I wanted to see, you know, how much energy he had, what his strength and conditioning was like. And, um, you know, I mean, he was ready. Sean Porter was ready. And Keith Thurman showed up tonight, ready. Keith, he said he wasn't hurt in the first round. What is your response to that? Okay, okay. guys. I have a question for Dan. Uh, a question for Dan Birmingham. Uh, Dan, um, how would you uh, assess Keith's performance tonight? I'd give him an A+. Plus. I'd give him an A+. Plus. All right, this is the last question. Here. Last question. He, how hurt did you think he was in the first round, and did you think you were going to be able to stop him? I thought we definitely opened up his eyes really quick. Um, I felt like there was an ability... But, you know, the, the extra punches weren't being landed. Um, he, he was doing a lot of pulling back, you know. He was taking a little bit off of some things. But I startled him, 
you know, I, I came out a little aggressive, maybe more aggressive. Um, it's easy to, to shock a fighter off bat because they don't understand your speed. They don't understand your power. They don't understand how to time you just yet, you know, and I, I think that's how I was able to get Danny Garcia in the first round. Thanks, All right, everybody. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you.